So this is the last uh, petroglyph video from our Owens Valley uh, field trip. This last one is 13 moons. And previous to this, we had been running all over the desert with our big, he all that heavy camera gear, taking all these videos in the burning hot sun. <laughs> and, but these places, every place we went to, they have a really deep spiritual vibe. And once you see them enough, you really get a, an emotional connection to them. And you see where the, the Mono people were at 5,000 years ago, 6,000 years ago, 10,000 years ago. And you realize that wave upon wave of foreigners from the Spanish uh, conquistadors, the United States government pushing westward, pushing westward, pushing westward all the time, looking for gold. Everybody was looking for gold. And you realize, after you've been to enough of these places, these sacred sites, it dawns on you what they already had, their culture and their knowledge of, of the land and of the earth, was much more valuable than any gold that's ever been found in North America. And it is, after that journey through the desert, it was very emotional. So I'll just let it play out, and I hope you enjoy it. And this is 13 moons. According to uh, UC Berkeley's Department of Archaeology, this is site INY436 in the Volcanic Tablelands. <clears throat> This is one of the more extraordinary petroglyphs here in the Tablelands. This one is called 13 Moons, of course, because we believe this is astro astronomical in uh, detail. You see the 13 prominent circles. There are 13 full moons per year. Now, our calendar only has 12 months, but there are actually 13 full moons in a year. The ancient Egyptians knew it. Celtic Druids knew it. The Aztecs knew it. The Mayans knew it. And there's no reason to believe that the Mono people that settled these lands tens of thousands of years ago, no reason to believe that they didn't know it too. This rock has a lot of symbolism in it. Not as much as... Uh, other uh, petroglyphs in the uh, tablelands. We can see down at the bottom the common oval with the uh, horizontal line through it. We see a common squiggle of a snake along the bottom. We see another cr uh, circle with a cross. <clears throat> and like the other uh, petroglyphs that has the similar circle and cross, kind of laid out, they kind of mark the directions, north, south, east, west, not exactly. We also have to consider soil settling over the last 8,000 years, which was when this thing was chiseled out, or thereabouts. But regardless of how accurate it is down to the tenth of a degree, for 8,000 years ago, it is magnificent. Let me call your attention to some of the other features on this uh, petroglyph. We also see over on the left, it could be a star, the sun, with the irradiating rays coming out from it. Above the sun is an odd collection of dots. The dots are eight across, and between the uh, sixth and seventh, there's a, above it is a row of three dots. Right off the top of my head, couldn't tell you what that means. The central glyph in this uh, petroglyph is this boxy figure it spans near the top to the bottom. Could maybe it uh, could be a tribal mask. It could be the map to someone's village. Attached to this central glyph is another circle that could that, uh, that could be a moon. 
it could, and again, it could be a map. It could be the ceremonial uh, dwelling of the village. Some of the moons have a different motif than the others. Starting from this end, let's say that's one. Number 10 has spikes coming off of it and ends in something that looks like a bird foot, bird track. The next one over has, in the upper right-hand quadrant, has spikes or rays emanating from it. In the lower left-hand quadrant, we see three different circles. Now, is there three different circles uh, connected to that moon, the 12th moon? Or is it connected to the big, tall motif in the, uh, in the uh, left center? In the... Uh, Upper cluster of the moons, we can see in the center, motif of a human. Is he carrying a bow, arrows? Is he carrying a shield? Is he carrying snakes? On the far right, we can see part of a bird foot. In the upper very top right-hand quadrant, we see a box with crisscrossing lines. We see similar uh, motif of crisscrossing lines near the center, but it, it's not a box, it's a line with the crisscrosses uh, attached to the bottom line, right above the 10th moon. Truly a remarkable sight. This is definitely one of the crown jewels of the volcanic tablelands. It's an amazing, amazing sight. These crown jewels are kept very secret. I'm not going to tell you how I figured it out. I'm not going to tell you where it's at. Don't even bother asking. If you really want to know where this place is, go to grad school. Become an archaeologist. Keep in mind, this petroglyph is about 8,000 years old. Some here in the volcanic tablelands are up to 12,000 years. After that, we really can't see them. These aren't, sca these aren't just brushed off. These are chiseled deep, sometimes up to a quarter inch deep into the stone. And the reason we can see the images is a geological phenomenon called desert varnish. What desert varnish is, you see how black the background is. Well, when you chisel something in to this red pumice, you get a lighter color. And the reason you get a lighter color is because over thousands and thousands of years, the air that we breathe reacts chemically to the pumice and turns it darker. <clears throat> so after 10,000, 15,000 years have gone by, you can't see any of the, 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 uh, <clears throat> the chiseled images are still there but they're not as vibrant and you can't see them. I mean, they don't stand out like this. They're just, it's just the whole surface becomes black as the desert varnish takes control. As the desert varnish slowly erases these images from time. And I've got a whole video on desert varnish, if you're interested. Of the three big crown jewels of the volcanic tablelands, 13 Moons, Skyrock, and Rosetta, they have luckily so far been kept from vandalism because of a high amount, crazy security. People that come up here hiking don't tell you where they're at. People that know where they're at, they keep silent about because they know they're vandals. There's been attempts to steal some of the petroglyphs in uh, the tablelands. I was uh, at one site earlier, an 8,000 to 10,000 year old like stone table with all these ancient drawings. And Heather had to go stamp her, chisel her name in, scratch her name in, along with her apparent loser boyfriend. Heather, no one cares. Don't desecrate these sacred sites, and they are sacred sites. <clears throat> Don't damage them because they are priceless. They're 8,000 years old. Please have some respect for the ancient, ancient people that stood here 8,000.
thousand years ago with immense amount of labor and really hardly any tools chiseled this gorgeous gorgeous piece of symbolic art one other thing i want to point out about the uh, different glyphs on the petroglyph right below the uh, if you can see the sun is like this arc with like uh, this other circle with different lines drawn out from it is it a meteor that exploded don't know is it a spiky porcupine with a very long tail is this something that's already gone extinct i don't know i don't know but whatever it is it's priceless not just in monetary value it's priceless in what it says about human culture eight thousand years ago this was carved with a knowledge that there's 13 full moons in one trip around the sun. There's not a lot of students graduating from high school that can tell you that. An absolutely remarkable sight. Anthropologists rightfully credit the Mono people for creating not just this petroglyph, but all the petroglyphs in the volcanic tablelands in the uh, Owens Valley. Remarkable, remarkable culture. To do this such a long time ago. And, and think about it, they didn't discover that there were 13 full moons in a year the day they painted this. This was already ancient knowledge handed down from generation to generation to generation, long before somebody came up here and carved it. The thing that it makes me wonder, for me, the lesson of the Mono people to me, with this right here, is if it wasn't for war and religious fanaticism like the Dark Ages, if we knew about this 8,000 years ago, where would we be today? How many times did we set ourselves back because of prejudice and bigotry and a lust for power. Paraphrasing Carl Sagan, for temporary control over one tiny speck of one small blue dot suspended in a sunbeam. That's the lesson that the Mono people have taught me. That's the lesson. That's the lesson the Mono people taught me. And I hope it's a lesson you get from this too. that's it from 13 moons site number INY436 here in the gorgeous volcanic tablelands of Southern California if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you like what I'm doing please hit the subscribe button and after I stop crying I'll be your lab partner thank you bye bye